Recently, we went to a cacao finca or chocolate farm. The tour was very, very interesting. We learned a lot. The problem was the guide was so knowledgeable, they just went on and on and on, resulting in a video that was way too long to put up on YouTube. So what we did was we broke it down into two still too long videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to release those with the caveat that you should only spend your time watching these videos if you're really into chocolate. So here's part one. We hope you enjoy. Buenos dias. We're here at Finca Hexiti, I believe it is, which is a cacao hacienda here in the mountains just west of Mayaguez. And we're going to see how they plant and harvest cacao, taste the pulp, and taste some of the chocolate. It should be really interesting. And the drive here was, what would you, how would you describe that drive? It was interesting. <laughs> Narrow <laughs> roads, sun right in your eyes. But, uh, the road, up the, into the mountains. The road services weren't actually bad, so that was the good part about it. But, uh, and now we're here and it's very lush and exciting. Um, this is very interesting. Yeah, they, said it was, they said it was in a uh, you know, shipping container. Yep, and there it is. And uh, there it is. They modified their shipping container, painted a uh, bright green. And here we are, you can see high in the mountains. So um, we actually have long shirts on today. So, uh, because it's in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome along. Well, this is uh, Finke Kiki. These guys is in a 40-foot uh, shipping container that they somehow brought up these uh, mountain roads that they um, put in place and painted it up and using it as uh, the base for their cocoa finca, cocoa farm here. Uh, very efficient. And they don't live here full time, because it is a, sort of a weekend retreat. But bed, nice kitchen. So back there is the bathroom. Got hooked up to electric, lots of electric power here. Super nice deck. And uh, hooks for a hammock. Boy, hooks for a hammock. <laughs> and uh, and they got plenty of water tanks here. Uh, family is part of this project and in different way they everybody is involved in, in, in this in this uh, this place in the, in the land and in the management um, the Finca Equity I'm gonna talk about a little bit about uh, about the, the 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 space the land is about 9.1 acres of land and uh, it's a agro it, it, we manage the place in agroforestry system, and and in that in that in taking that in, in view, that means we try to use the whole cycle of the forest in our purposes, and we try to merge in that cycle without harm the forest. The the land is in the northwest side of the of the island, and that means this place is very rainy. Uh, we receive in between. 75 inches of rain to 125 inches of, of rain every year in between May to November. The meaning of that is we, we are in a humid or wet forest. In compared with a Junque that is a rainforest, a Junque receives almost 225 or a little bit more of rain in the whole year in between January to December because normally the rainforests don't have any like a dry season, completely dry or super rain season because all the time it's raining, almost every day in a Junker rain something. Um, that, that, uh, that kind of weather makes this place a little bit difficult to manage because in the rain season, that is almost six months, six, seven months, rain so much that you start working in the mornings and then at 11, 11.30 you need to stop because it's already the clouds are already there and sometimes it's already raining at 11 or noon and sometimes the rain is noon to the evening sometimes to the to the night and heavy rain um, the temperature in, in this place is about in between 75 degrees average in the whole island and the minimum here is 52 
to 54 in, in this time of the year in between January to March is that is the coldest uh, month and the highest temperature goes to 105 107 mm -hmm. that is when you take the, the temperature in the thermometer and the humidity and actually the in that moment the forest feels like a sauna and maybe you are sitting down in the floor and you're sweating literally um, and that is another risk because we don't able to work so much in that kind of weather because you're gonna feel dizzy or you're gonna have a heat stroke or something and, and it's very dangerous. Co uh, cacao. cacao. The cacao in the island is not new. It's something that our indigenous people bring from with them in well, a thousand of years ago. But the reality, when Spaniards came here and they start bringing coffee that that kind of or, or the varieties of cacao that we have it like a native already they totally forgot about that and they start putting coffee 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 in mountains and cane sugar and other stuff and the cacao get completely forgotten like uh, 25 years ago maybe 30 years ago some farmers and some professors of the university of maya west in, in, in maya west town they when in this place that is the uh, Federal Experimenter Station in Mayagüez, they have a big collection of cacao trees. They get there and then they decide that they need to do something with, with this, these trees. They start pruning the trees and cleaning the trees and make the trees producing more cacao. They start harvesting the cacao and making some micro fermentation from every single tree. And then they send the, the, these uh, beans to the chocolatiers in the world and they receive back the data and the characterization of the trees and the, and the cacao and from that collection for 200 something cacao trees they, they receive that 170 something is best, the best quality cacao in the world like a, a, aroma, a cacao de aroma y grano fin that bean is like a gourmet cacao and then the other characteristic is the super producer tree. That means a super producer is a tree that is going to give you in between 10 to 15 maybe more pots per month when the tree is already mature. In 6-7 years when the tree gets in the full maturity, you're going to have a tree that is going to give you all every, every single month, every 27 days, 29 days, 10 to 15, maybe 20 pots per mm. month. Um, What's a pot? A uh, pod. Oh, yeah. Um, that that kind of uh, that kind of, of uh, production is the production that you want in a in a in a plantation of cacao. The when they receive that data, they start making clones, making clones and, and all for all of that kind of varieties, and then planting some farms. And right already the big farms in the island have. 12,000 something cacao trees in between all of these kind of of, uh, of varieties. Normally a, a, a plantation of cacao you need nine varieties because the cacao is a, is a tree that is cross-pollinisated and auto-pollinisated. But you don't know what varieties is, is that kind. And then you need nine varieties minimum for make sure all of the cacao have the, the opportunity to get pollinated in some way. Here we have 14 varieties. 12 of them is, is good med or aroma grano fino. And the other two is varieties that we're gonna use like a, the pattern of the grafting trees. The pattern means the, the, the root part of the tree. That roots normally is from a, 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 from a seed that you put it to sprout and, and and sprout and that is the pattern and you attach the grafted part that is the, the variety that you want um, you're gonna see that the cacao tree is very uh, strong is resilient actually from 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 hurricane maria we lost the the 90 percent of the of the plantation because in that moment our trees is very young trees some of them have two years some of them three years and they don't survive. They don't. They, they, it's too much wind. They get burned or move so many times that the roots is get damaged and, and die. But the ones that survive is still there, and some of them is already producing. Um, the others that is 
in different stages of growing is tree that we, we plant after Hurricane Maria, some of them is already producing something because when it's grafted, the trees normally start producing at one year and a half, two years, or three years. But from seeds, you need to wait four or five years to, the, to see the first spots in the tree. Um, you're gonna see the flower, the flower is super tiny, and the pollinizators is uh, fruit flies and little insects. Normally, you don't, you don't gonna see a, a, a bee in, in, the, in the surrounding of the flowers. I don't know why, but that is the, the reality and, and, and that is the fact. The bees don't go in, the, in, in that kind of flowers. Um, the other thing, the maintenance of the trees, we prune the trees normally uh, almost all, all the year around in, when it's a young tree, but when it gets in the mature, mature uh, stage, only two times in a year is, 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 is completely good. And normally the, the, the maintenance is pruning because we need the, uh, preserving the shape of the tree and the, the height. The height of the tree normally is in between nine to eight, to nine to eight feet. If we leave it growing wild, it's gonna be 20 feet or more, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be difficult to harvest. Um, what else? You're gonna see varieties that is red pod, yellow, orange, green. That is depend of the variety and depend of the of, of, of the of the time of ripeness in the in the in the tree of, of in the fruits. Okay. Um, the island have criollo, amelonado. Trinitario and Forastero. That is the, the main four varieties, and from that four is a sub varieties that is spreading in the island too, that is good, good uh, varieties. But in compare for the Lega with uh, Ecuador, Ecuador have 170 something uh, genetics of cacao. And from that 170 genetics, it's a, a span, it's a, a fan of, of, of different varieties and sub varieties. It's a lot. That is because Ecuador is one of the, the origins of the cacao. And here is we are we we, we bring the cacao from that area too. Um, I'm gonna bring a little cacao tree for make sure you know what is a grafted tree and how they look like. And some lines in the grafted tree never disappear, and you're gonna see it in the forest too. That that lines. Uh, in whatever question you have, please. Tell me, and I try to, to answer the question. The tree of cacao, the, the cacao tree, um, is able to, to produce for 80 years, 100 years, if it's in a good maintainer. That means my sons, my, maybe my grandsons, still harvesting the same trees that we plant right now. And that is, that is amazing, because if you compare for, in like a co the coffee, the coffee you only have to harvest in a year. Cacao, in this kind of cacao, every month. And the coffee, you need to change the coffee or the plant or prune it in 15 years. Or prune it or change it completely and, and wait another two years for the first uh, beans in the plant. This one, maybe the first four or five years is very, like a slowly, but when it start producing in a good way, for 100 years. That is amazing. Uh, you don't need to to spend so many time uh, changing or, or planning other other plantations because the one that you already have is all the time producing. You need to prune it because when you prune, you are fomenting and, and literally make the tree producing more flowers and more pots. Because you're gonna see the trees have a lot of branches and normally the cacao tree wants to grow all the time, all the time, all the time. They have a lot of energy to grow. But if you prune it, you turn into the tree, okay, I don't grow it in branches and leaves, but I have the opportunity to have flowers and more pots. And the tree is gonna take that energy to, to make more pots. Um, this is the grafted tree. Grafted tree, have two parts, the pattern and the grafted part, that is the top part. The grafted is the, 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 one, the, the piece that we want to, to preserve and we want that they develop and grow like a tree. The pattern normally is a variety of cacao that is uh, 
very resilient and very uh, strong in, in the root system. It's able to adapt in whatever kind of soil, and that is the reason we select the variety of amelonado that normally is that kind of cacao that is very strong in, that, in the root system. Um, when the, when the, the seeds sprout and already have the tree growing, you need to wait that the, the tree has like a, the thickness of a pencil. When that happens, the tree is already in a good shape to grow. That means you go in a variety of tree of the variety that you want to, to graft it, select a, a branch that has the same thickness, you cut the branch, and from only one branch, maybe you have 10 to 15 new trees. And that is good because you are exponentially uh, having more trees for you. When that happens, you're gonna cut from the branch the little pieces in between leaves. And normally you need one or two uh, point of growing in that piece of, of bark. For mature, when you graft it, you have two opportunities to, to start a, a new tree. When you cut, normally you cut in the top, in the bottom, and in the back, you cut and you open the bark, and you match the same size in the, in the pattern, and you take the same amount of bark, and you reattach that grafted tree, you're gonna uh, reattach there, and with a paraffin tape, tape, you're gonna wrap it up and tight enough that the tissues is touching each other. And when that happens, you need to wait 14 to 21 days to make sure the graft that is accepted. If the graft that is accepted, you're gonna see a little green dot right there in the, in the growing point, and that means that it's accepted, but it's not uh, ready enough. So you need to wait for the, that little piece to start develop and have a branch, some leaves. When that happens and you have already a, a maybe a feet long branch or maybe a, a six inches with some leaves, you need to cut the pattern. If you don't cut the pattern, eventually the tree say, okay, I'm here in the high, I, I take in all of the energy that I need. I don't need any more this branch in the side and this, this branch start drying and it's gonna be dead. And you're gonna lose the material that you already grafted. And if you lose material, that means you are, need to go and pick it up another branch from a tree that is already mature and you don't want that, okay? Um, normally the bottom line of the grafting part is the bottom, is the part, is the line that normally do, never see rays from the tree. You go in a tree that is already grafted and is already mature or is developed, is you don't see that line in the bottom. If you don't see it, maybe it's because it's underground or maybe the tree completely uh, abort that, that the grafted part and you are, you are seeing the, the pattern and not the grafted tree. And that is not good because you lose the grafted tree and you don't know what kind of variety of amelonado you have there. And that is, maybe you're able to re-graft re in place but it's a little bit difficult and risky because it's more uh, conditioned that the, the tree needs to, to manage. When you graft it, you put it in a, in a nursery that some stuff is uh, already controlled, but in the forest, it's not. Um, the bottom line right here, the top line right there, and in the back part, you're gonna have this it's two lines, but it's the line that is one cut in the middle. And when the, you open the, the, the bark, you have the, the, the two edges, okay? When you open the bark, you're literally taking out the bark. And when you came here, we, you need to match the same amount, the same long of the bark in the pattern. You, same, you do the same cuts, you open the, the bark, and you reattach the one that you wanted here. And in, the, in a good way, in the, the way that you don't damage the, the heart of the wood of the pattern, and you don't damage the tissue of the grafted part, because if, if you damage, the, it's not gonna be the callus, and it's, it's gonna be a mess, and nothing happened. It's gonna be dead. But when you reattach it, you wrap it up, and 
everything is gonna be very tight. And in 14, 21 days, you're gonna have this little dot like this. You see this? This is a, a point of growing that is trying to make a, another branch or, or, uh -huh. or a leaf. That is the same, and the same, if you see in all of these dots right here, that mm -hmm. is the same that you're gonna see when you, you, when you graft it. When the, the grafter is accepted, you're gonna see that little growing dots. That means it's in the way, but needs more time. Normally from grafted to put it in, in the forest, pass in between nine to 10 months. Mm. Wow. For you need to, to, to make sure that the tree is um, already uh, hard, hard enough to put it in, in place. If not, you're gonna lose it because the, the condition is too difficult or too hot or too humid or even shady for other plants and it's, it's the tree dies. You need to wait for the, the branch to have wood and then when that happens, it's already good. Okay. Here, we have in an in a area that have different cacao trees and in different stages of growing. We have here behind me, we have a one that is two years and a half. Hmm. Right there in, in back of you, you have trees that is already three years and a half and four and it's already in, in production. That means these trees is very uh, vigorous and have a lot of energy uh, to produce cacao. And even in the dry season, they are still producing. Um, in, in the other areas right there, you're gonna see another tree that have like a little pot already. That is a melonado variety. This one is trinitario. That means that the difference, you're able to see it in the pot. Here in the pot in the melonado, it's a melonado because it's like a watermelon. It's, it's, no, it's more smooth and rounded. The Trinitario is more long and, and rough skin. That is difference in between them. The color, we don't take the color because in between the varieties, you have a melonado that normally go to, to green, to yellow and orange. You have Trinitarios the same. You have Forasteros the same. But normally in the Trinitarios you have some variety that is like a wine color or red color and some other is purple color and some of them start green and stay green the whole time and, and get ripe and stay green. That depends of the variety. For that kind of cacao you need to take a, a, the scissors and take a little bit of part of the skin of the, of the, of the fruit and then you see inside. If the inside is, is green, the pot is still green. If it's already yellow, that may tell you that it's already ripe and it's good to, to harvest. If you harvest too early, the beans inside is gonna be, don't have the, the same amount of sugars and compounds and maybe the flavor change. But that is the reason you want to harvest when it's in between yellow and orange in the, in the, in the ones that is, that is the cycle of the, of the um, ripening. Some, some variety that is red, that this one right here, that have some red, that one, uh, some, some of them stay red the whole time. Some of them is only red, green, yellow, and orange. Sometimes they get in a, in a moment that have three colors, and I said that is the, like a Rasta, Rasta ones. <laughs> because it's red, yellow, and green, and, and it looks mm. very beautiful. Um, but this kind of, of cacao, you gonna you see the flowers. It's super tiny flowers, and that flowers, if you touch it too much, mm. it fall very quickly, and that means it's a it's a less opportunity to have more cacao. Right there, you have a vanilla. A uh, vine growing with the cacao. The vanilla normally is a companion, a good companion for cacao trees. They grow right there in the in the bark. But normally, if you see the roots of the of the vanilla, don't touch any of the bed of the flowers. And it's like a she knows that it's right there, flowers and and, and some pots. Yeah. Here. Wow. Look at 
taste and mouth it. This one is one of the ones that we're going to taste. Mm. We're going to harvest two, two pots. This one that is a, a forastero and it's a good variety and another that is a melonado and you're going to compare the taste of the pot. And eventually you're going to taste the chocolate too. But this is for you guys to taste the, the pulp of the... This one is already ripe in the way that it's more yellow than green. But sometimes we do this, pick up a little bit of the skin and you see it's more yellow than green. That means it's, a, it's already in a, in a good ripe. The taste of this for me is one of the best because Let's try the pulp is a little bit more like a sour or, or sweet sour. More ripe, like a less sugar in the pulp and it's less less flavor, but it's, it's good enough. Pass the, take it and pass the, to the everybody have the, feel the, the, the weight and, and the texture of the, of the, of the pulp. Another thing in this tree, this tree is young. This tree has only three years old <laughs> and it's already in production. <laughs> but that is because it's a grafted tree. Normally grafted trees, one year and a half or, or a little bit more start producing. Why is that? Because when you, sorry, when you graft it, that branch that you select in a tree that is already mature is almost mature or mature in that moment when you put that tissue in the pattern that means that 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 piece of tissue needs less time it to accelerates. get to the maturity and, mm -hmm. and start producing that is the reason in, in year and a half you have some trees that is already in flowers maybe don't give you any pot but it's already with flowers and that is a good thing because it's, that means it's very vigorous and, and it's going to be a very good producer. Um, right here you're able to see the bottom line of the grafting. If you see that right now here, this is the bottom line of the grafting. That line is, is already in, in the tree, that means this tree is grafted and the bottom part is the pattern. If it's a branch growing through the pattern, I need to prune it for make sure um, for make sure the, the, the pattern don't take the lead of the tree and then eventually maybe the other part dies and that is not good. But that is the reason normally that line is an indicator for us that that tree is already a grafted, it's in a good way. If I saw the branch going, if it's a branch even growing here or in the same line, I need to cut it. Because in the same line that means maybe half of the of the of the branch is no grafted and the other half is graft, but I don't know what mm -hmm. kind of the genetic get in that branch. Before Hurricane Maria, we have like almost 500 cacao trees. Wow. And yeah, when I'm gonna show you the before and after. And in the beginning, when we when we arrive here before or after Hurricane Maria, um, we say, "Wow, okay, we need to quit. It's too much. Is is this is a, a mess? Is." We need a lot of time to redo uh, re, re, re everything again. But in the, in, a good, in the same way, we get here like a three weeks after hurricane and then we don't get back maybe in a month or two months. And when we arrive again, I start seeing the thing in a, little, in a different way. Like, okay, we already have a lot of, so I put a lot of energy and time here doing stuff. I don't want to quit. I want to continue the project. And then I said, okay, you know, the hurricane do a favor to us. They clean the forest, knock down trees and prune trees. That is work that I need to do. But the hurricane do it naturally. <laughs> and I need to clean, or see, yeah, the areas and, and, and replant it again. But I, I see in that way, and, and we start doing the thing that we need to do and, and the, the, the other thing is, is story, history. But we continue and now in the beginning we have 3.5 acres of land, now we span to nine. And, and that is a good thing because we want to conserve this, this place. It's a lot of 
uh, endemism and native animals and plants and it's an area that is uh, important to, to the, uh, the water. It's a, it's, a, it's a place that you have a lot of water going on and you have a river very close, that is the, the main river of Añasco. And yes, it's, it's, uh, it's part of, of my goals or, or our goals here that is conservation, education and plantation. And the education is more because I've been working with the university for a long time and I, I spent time giving classes in, in physiology of plants and and then I, 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 I love to teach but in, the, in, in, in this place I love to receive people that have young families like our young kids and, and schools and groups of schools right now in April we're gonna receive a, a Waldorf school for, for a weekend mm -hmm. and that is like a before the, the Holy Week they're gonna stay here for three nights and for me that is the nice t stuff because there is opportunity to go in, in the mind of the kids and say okay you you have you you want to eat you have some food but you you know how hard is working land and, and different kind of agriculture because when you when we put farm here sometimes you when you think about farm you say okay it's a flat land and it's, it's everything in line and, and very you know like a normal farm but this is a, a completely different farm this is a agroforestry and this is a forest that we are trying to make the forest produce something for you or for us, and that is the is completely different. Uh, you don't you don't gonna see any like a irrigation system or super straight lines in place because we need to use the contour of the land and different manners, different ways to to get here. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right here, this tree is a tree that is already in place. We arrive in this in this land, and this tree is already here. This tree is a, a melonado. Uh, it's another variety of a melonado. And we thought that this tree has in between 15 to 20 years because it's already mature when we arrive, and it's already producing. And we need to take a lot of vines and a lot of plants that is in covering the tree. We prune the tree and the tree start producing. Actually, right now it's, it's not a lot of, of pots because it's dry season, but normally in the rain season, this tree is like a full of cacao. <laughs> and maybe it's not a super good variety, but it's good enough and we, you, we use it. We use it for making the, the chocolate that you're gonna taste eventually. In the top, the other one that I, I told you like a 15, 20 years, this tree is the only other two trees that is already here in place. And it's in a good production too. Normally these trees, I need to prune it in the in the in the top because it's still so high or too high. And if you look around the, the main branches, it's already some cut. But since the Hurricane Maria, I don't prune it. I don't prune it, I leave the trees like a, getting the all of the energy that they need. But now it's in the moment that I need to prune it because it's already some pots uh, growing in the in the tip of the branches. And that is, is telling me that the tree is already in a good shape, in a good energy, and I need to prune it. It's been four years, right? Almost, yeah. It's going to be in, in September of this year, it's going to be five years. Yeah. If I don't have the miscalculation. Yes. It's going to be five years. Um, but yes, this kind of tree, the same is this melonado, and it's already here, but we use it for making the, the, the cacao. If you made it this far, you must really love chocolate. Thanks for watching. There's a second part to this video, so we hope you watch that too.